on it generally going to be given within the problem. So 20,006, 19,006, uh, and 20,001. So let's go up here. I'm just going to plug those numbers in here. 20,006, 19,006, and 20,001. Notice I'm not, I'm not uh, putting a comma in there or anything. Of course, I'm formatted. The cells are being formatted already in terms of number format. Going to sum that up by saying equals SUM. And I'm just going to sum that up. The 26 plus the 196 plus the 20,001 is going to add up to a total of 60,003 for the third quarter. Now, that's units. And we're going to talk about now the dollar amount, which will be 24. That's how much we uh, sell these for. Therefore, we're going to multiply this out now. So 20,006 units in July times $24 would be equals 20,006 times 24 and enter. Wait, I said that. You probably thought I was going to do that in my head there, but no. I was gonna, we're going to do that here. <laughs> say This equals the 19.6 units that we're going to sell times the $24 that we sell them for, and that'll give us the uh, 47400 And then in September, we're going to say this equals the 20,001 times the $24 that we sell them for. And so this is how many units we're going to sell. And now we're going to sum up the dollars sales that we believe that we're going to have. So this is going to equal the sum of. And notice, uh, sometimes I'll try to format that. We could format these in terms of, of dollars over here as well, just so we can see the fact that uh, when we're separating units from dollars, which can be a bit confusing in these types of problems. All right, step two is to make the production budget. And uh, you might be thinking, well, uh, the production, how many units are we going to product? That produce, that's what the production budget is going to tell us. And you might be thinking, well, we already figured that out, right? We're going to, we're going to have uh, 60,003 in sales. We're, we're going to have to produce the, that many throughout the quarter. However, uh, note that uh, we might have some units on hand already and we might want to have a cushion basically to have some extra units in case uh, we sell more than we thought. We don't want to be short on the sales. So we're going to start off with uh, the budgeted units for each month. And of course, we've already calculated those numbers. Those numbers are going to equal the 20,006 for July. And then for August, we have the 196. I'm going to select tab to go to the next cell. And September is the 20,001. And that, so we're just bringing those numbers down. So, of course, this is how many we think we're going to sell. So that's what we're going to start off with in terms of how many do we think we're going to produce. Then we're going to, we're going to try to decide, basically, do we want an ending balance in the budget? Meaning, do we want to work into the budget that we'll have some added extra leftover units after we sell our 20,006 in inventory just in case our sales are greater than that? So how would we come up with that number? We're going to have to scroll down and see that will generally be given within the data. And this should be kind of like a policy that we'll have within the company saying how much do we do we want in the ending inventory. And in this problem, it says that ending finished goods uh, percent of next month's uh, expected unit sales. So what that means is basically we want to predict, predict next month's unit sales and have a, an ending finished goods inventory equal to 80% of next month's. So that's how much kind of cushion we want as of the end of the month in case sales are higher than we expected them to be. And so that's a pretty large uh, variable. So we're going to say then that uh, next month we can think that we're going to start with next month's budgeted sales for July. So for July, then we're thinking about uh, August's sales in the next month. So that would be the 19.6. So we're thinking about the 19.6. And then we're going to say that we're going to take 80% of that to be our cushion. So it's going to be 0.8. If we want to make that a percent, we can go up to the home tab. We can go to the alignment group and we can go to the percent. Therefore, we're going to say that we're going to equal the 19.6. Those are going to be the sales in the next month times the 80%. So that's how much we want to basically have on hand at the end of July that's still on hand after the sales of the 20,006. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to say, well, for August, we're going to say equals and take the September sales. We want to take next month's sales according to our rule times 80%. And we're going to say the 80% make that a percentage and multiply that out. So of the next month's projected times the 80%, we think we want as of the end of August 
16,080 units left over according to this, this policy. And then you might be going, well, what about uh, September? Because obviously our, our sales budget only goes up to September. And that's one of those areas where the, the problem's going to have to give you some more data in terms of, well, what do we think the, the budgeted sales are going to be for October, which is outside of the, of our um, quarter that we're budgeting for. But we need that if, if this is the policy. So we're going to have to go down to our data. And that's why it gives us this October number out here. And we're going to say 20,006 is what we think is October. So we're going to have to uh, multiply that times the 0.8, the ending balance number, and we'll uh, take the percentage of that and then multiply that out. So we got the 20,006 times the 80% and enter. Okay, so now we've just entered some labels here. So we have the ratio, we have the budget ending inventory in units. Remember, we're talking about units as opposed to dollars. Got to keep that in mind as we go through this. And then we'll add this up. So the required units of available production. That's going to equal the budgeted units. This is how many we think we're actually going to sell in July, plus the cushion, what we want left over in ending inventory. So we're going to sell 20,006 and we want 15,680 in the warehouse as of the end of July, just in case we sell more and or to get us ready for August. So I'm going to hit tab. We're going to do the same thing. You could copy and paste the formula. However, I'm just going to calculate it a few times so we can see that calculation. So it's going to be the amount we're going to produce plus the amount that we want in ending inventory equals in September, the amount we're going to produce in September plus the amount we want in ending inventory. Okay, and now you might think we're, we're finished with that, but now we, this is what we need to produce. And if we were starting at ground zero, that would be the case. However, uh, we probably have some stuff in the warehouse already. So now that we know how many we want to produce if we had nothing, now we got to subtract out the stuff that's already in the warehouse. Now this number can be a little bit tricky. Notice I put the word in here, less beginning inventory. So this is the stuff that's already in the warehouse. It could be a little bit tricky to, to get some of those numbers depending how the problem is set up. We do note that like, if we skip over to August, we can see that, well, um, if the ending inventory that we want to have is uh, 15,680 as of the end of July, then if all accordance goes according to plan, then the beginning inventory for August will equal that number. So, so we know that that's going to be